Hi everyone. Is your production environment in need of a refresh? Soon your PostgreSQL will be no longer supported. In this presentation I'll explain why you should always update and do it without significantly impacting your production. My name is Florin Irion and I started working at Second Quadrant two years ago, now ADB. And I am part of the PG Logical and BDR team as a developer, tester, support engineer and even consultant on some occasions. So what's for today's agenda? I will briefly explain how PostgreSQL releases work and what is the difference between minor and major releases. I will talk about and give you some pros and cons around the upgrade options. I will give you a quick introduction to PG Logical because it's the tool I'll use for the upgrade. And finally, I will show you what are the steps to actually perform the major upgrade. First of all, why upgrade? Probably the most important aspects of the are the security improvement. Every PostgreSQL version adds more than authentication methods and SSL TLS version support. More features. Also, every version release gives us new or at least better options for monitoring, high availability or disaster recovery. More performance. There are versions that improve massively performance, for example 9.6 with parallel query or version 10 with just-in-time compilation. However, as a rule, every release improves performance without changing anything on the application level. New SQL standard implementations, functions and constructs to help developers bring out the best. Now, a quick introduction on how PostgreSQL releases work. You probably all know that PostgreSQL is enriched with new features once a year with what is called a major release. The, major release on, the minor releases, on the other hand, are quarterly and add security or bug fixes. And there are so many. For example, the latest PostgreSQL 12 minor has resolved four CVs and more than 50 bug fixes. PostgreSQL Global Development Group guarantees these minor releases for more or less five years for each major version of Postgres. This means that when they reach end of life, after five years from the major release, they will no longer have security updates and bug fixes. From this graph, graph we can see that we are running out of steam for 9.5, which will receive its last update in February 2021. Minor releases are always compatible with all other minor versions. That is, you can install a 10.6 on a server that had only 10.1. We don't need to update it consecutively. However, it is of course highly recommended to apply them as soon as they are, are released. To do this, you need to shut down Postgres, install po updated packages, and restart progress, Postgres. The advice is to have a QA environment and first update and test there. You should start by updating first the standbys, switch over your, your applications, and then update the former master. There is no need for anything else, as simple as that. There are several options for major upgrades instead, and they all have their pros and cons. The dump and restore is suitable for any PostgreSQL version, but being very, very slow is not recommended for large databases. PG upgrade is very, is very fast, especially using the link option. However, fast is not zero downtime, and there are other cons like it can only be used to upgrade from one version to another consecutively, from 9.6 to 10, from 10 to 11, and so on. Also, you need to recreate all your high availability setup, as the standbys will not be usable with the new version.
When our databases are not suited to use these two options, we can use logical replication. This consists of creating a logical replica and waiting for it to synchronize with the master completely. We can even create all physical standbys needed in advance and they will get all the replication from the master automatically. It is recommended to monitor the cluster for a couple of days and check that everything is working as expected. When all the checks are green, turn off the old master and redirect the application to the new PostgreSQL instance. This takes only a few seconds of downtime for the production or even zero using a connection puller, like for example PG Bouncer. Like for the minor updates, it's advisable to automate the process and test it in, in the QA environment until you are confident with the procedure. Postgres already has a logical replication mechanism built in. It's available from version 10 and it's mainly implemented on PG Logical. In this presentation, I will show you the necessary steps to upgrade with PG Logical. However, there are other logical replication methods to do it. Please note also that physical replication is not an option because of the incompatibility of the data directory between major versions. PG Logical. I will use and talk about PG Logical too. There is also a version 3, but it's not open source yet. PG Logical is a fully integrated PostgreSQL extension that does not need triggers or external programs for its operation. It is a valid alternative to physical streaming replication regarding high availability and disaster recovery. It brings more flexibility, such as replicating between different versions, and besides, you can do selective replication. That is only what you, what, what you decide gets replicated. And one important thing related to upgrades is that it can replicate sequences. The state of the sequences added to replication set, it's replicated peri periodically and not in real time. Dynamic buffer is used for the value being replicated so that the subscriber actually receives future state of the sequence. Pigeological supports any version of PostgreSQL starting from 9.4. Since there's logical replication inside the PostgreS core, why would one want to use Pigeological? Or why use built-in replication? What are the differences? The built-in replication can be used in specific environments where it's not always possible to install extensions, such as PGLogic, due to strict rules on what can be installed on those servers. So only built-in functions are available. PGLogical, on the other hand, it's much richer in functions. There will always be features that won't be part of Postgres for a variety of reasons. For example, the community might think that PostgreSQL doesn't need certain features inside the core, or maybe just because they haven't yet been introduced in the latest version. Or perhaps some are only required by specific, specific customers. With PG Logical, we can act immediately where needed and, and have the functionality available for all PostgreSQL versions. Now that I've finished the introduction to basic notions around PostgreSQL and PG Logical, I will now show you the steps we need to take to create a logical replica and use it as the new master once the synchronization is complete. In my example, I will upgrade from version 9.5 to 13. Let's see what we are missing by using Postgres 9.5. Every major, every major release introduces new fixes and innovative features. There is a nice website, y-upgrade.depesh.com, where you can specify the version you are using and it will give you all the fixes that you are missing. 
I counted more than 80 CVs for this case. And as you can see in the photo, there are more than 2,000 fixes. Allow me to list a couple of very important features that we are missing. Parallel aggregates, parallel sequential scans, declarative partitioning, Scrum authentication, just-in-time compilation, parallel creation of index, store procedures, reindex concurrently, and so many others. Okay, before diving into explaining the steps and the requirements for our grade, I would like to explain some terms I'll use. The node is the information that Podfus has on a database ready to send or receive with PGLogic. Providers and subscribers are the roles that a node can assume. A provider is a node that sends the data, instead the subscriber is the one that receives the data. Replication sets manage which tables will be replicated and also what actions on those tables. To ensure that the subscriber receives data from the provider, we must specify a subscription and configure the rules of this through the replication sets. I'll be using PG95 and PG13 as host names for the search and destination servers, respectively. There are some requirements. Tables must have the same name of both nodes, must have the same primary key. PGLogica needs to identify the tuples to be modified on the subscriber. However, as a side note, on tables without a primary key, it's possible to replicate only the inserts. But this is not the case for us. We need everything replicated on our graded server, both present data and new changes. We don't need to leave anything out. The tables must belong to the same schema on both databases must have the same columns with the same data types and the check constraints, not null constraints, etc. must be the same or at least are most weaker on the subscriber than the provider. They must be more permissive. PG Logical runs at the database level, so global objects such as roles are not copied. The best way to copy them is by dump and restore global objects only using dash dash global or global only option with pg dump all <clears throat> unlogged and temporary tables will not and cannot be replicated ddl is not automatically replicated managing ddl so that the provider and subscriber subscriber databases remain compatible is the responsibility of the user the replicate DDL command function allows DDL to be executed on the provider and on the subscriber consistently. You need to install PGLogical on both the old and the new server. And you need to install the correct version for each one. In our case, PostgreSQL 9.5 PGLogical for the old server and PGLog and Postgres, sorry, Postgres. 12, 13 PG logical for the new one. Now that we have the packages installed, we need to configure some parameters in the PostgreSQL configuration file on both servers. Shared preload libraries equals PG logical. This statement will cause Postgres to load PG logical on startup so that you can use the extension. If there are other value other values on this configuration, just add PG logical, separating it with commas. We'll level logical. We need this to make PostgreSQL write the walls with necessary information for the logical decoding. Max, workers, max worker processes to 10 sets the maximum number of concurrent background processes that the system can support. We need to allow Postgres to create new worker processes to be used by PG Logical. Max wall senders to 10. We also need the wall senders that will take care of sending the recorded data to the other node. 
at least one per node, we can put a slightly number, however. Max replication slots 10. PG Logical uses replication slots, so we need at least one on the provider. In the Postgres authentication file, we must give the replication and connection permissions to the user we will use, specifying the database correct name, or databases if we use more than one. My user is called PG Logical, and this user must have replication permissions and must be a super user. It is strongly recommended that you use the pgpass file to manage your passwords. Now to load pglogical and use the new configurations, we need to restart the servers. On both servers in their respective databases, we need to create the extension. After that, we will create the provider and subscriber nodes by specifying at least a meaningful name and the connection string. This will identify the database as nodes ready to be used by PG Logical. We now add all the tables and sequences in the default replication set. You can do that per schema. In the example, I'm adding all the tables and sequences of the public schema. This means that any subscriber that, who connects to the default replication set will receive all changes in the public schema. It will synchronize this way all tables and sequences during the initial phase in a single transaction. For very large databases, you can also choose to add larger tables one at a time by initially removing them from the default replication set and adding them to the new replication set after the subscription is created. Let's make the subscriber communicate with the provider now. For this purpose, we have to create a subscription. From the subscriber node, using the create subscription function, we need at least two parameters, subscription name and provider data source name. We can leave default values for the other parameters. The only one parameter we need to be careful of is synchronized structure. As I said before, we must have the same tables with the exact definition on both nodes. We can do it manually with the dump and restore using the dash dash schema only option, or let PG Logical do it by setting synchronized structure to true, as this parameter defaults to false. The other parameters are optional, and in our case of a major upgrade, they are irrelevant. The replication sets would be used to manage which data to replicate to the subscriber, but for our case we need to replicate all the data, so we use the default replication set. With synchronized data, we can decide whether to synchronize all data already present or to replicate only changes from this moment on. This one defaults to true, so it's what we need. Forward orig origins is what um, sorry, it's used to send changes made by other nodes and not just by the provider. That is for cases with multiple providers and subscribers. And apply delay is used to have a replica with a certain delay needed, for example, in this disaster recovery cases. Now the present data is replicating from the provider to the subscriber, and when the initial synchronization ends, PG Logical will continue to replicate the new changes as well. We can check the subscription status using the show subscription status function, and if the result is initializing, then we are still in the initial phase of copying the data. If we get replicating, then we are already replicating the data in real time. As I already said, PGLogical works at database level, so we need to repeat these steps from creating the extension to the creation of the subscription for 
each database we use and want on the new server. Always test the procedure in QA environments first, and possibly with a similar dataset and server capacity to measure the time for synchronization and simulate the cutover. Test it multiple times from scratch in order to practice and master the procedure. This technique allows application developers to have a sandbox of, of a PostgreSQL 13 environment similar to the new production environment on which they can also perform benchmarks. When all of our databases have a subscription and are all with replicating status, we can switch our applications. Set up a connection puller to the main database, if you are not using it already. Pause the connection pool. Force synchronization of all sequences with the synchronized sequence function. Switch the configuration of the pool over to the new system and resume the connection pool so it accesses now the new server and reload. We can now clean our new database of everything we use to create this replica. Unsubscribe, delete the PG logical node, drop the extension, drop the use role, and delete the roles in the configuration and application files related to PG logical. And that's all. Easy, no? So, summing up this presentation. According to our experience at Second Quadrant and now ADB, the use of a PG Logical is the preferred way to upgrade to the newest PostgreSQL major version, especially in the physical and virtual machine environments where a major PostgreSQL upgrade goes along with a major operating system upgrade and most likely hardware upgrade. Don't forget that this approach allows application developers to test and benchmark the new database and reduce the business risk. A one-fits-all solution doesn't exist. This is one possible way to perform major upgrades. Always choose the one that adapts better with your context. It might be that logical dump and restore works perfectly fine. In any case, Always start simple and improve incrementally based on feedback from tests. So test, test, test. As I said before, there is also version 3 of PG Logical that was re-architected to support even more functionality than version 2, including it has replication support for, uh, for failover slots. It supports replica identity full. That is the limitation that table must have primary key is gone. Transparent DDL replication. PG Logical takes care of replicating the DDLs. Faster performance. Replication to Kafka and RabbitMQ. Transparent support for partitioning and repartitioning on the fly. Better conflict detection, it can detect and resolve more type of conflicts and more granular conflict resolution configuration. Does not require a super user to be used for the replication and it provides much more statistics and views into its state, including worker errors visible from SQL rather than from the logs. The same approach can be used to perform major online upgrades in containerized scenarios orchestrated by Kubernetes. Think about upgrading in the future a PostgreSQL 13 database to a PostgreSQL 16 database without any downtime. Just by starting a PostgreSQL cluster using replication from an existing one. This is what we are currently doing with our cloud-native PostgreSQL operator. Well, that's all from me. Thank you for attending this talk. I think we have now a couple of minutes for questions. However, you can also reach out on social media.
Thank you.